We're moving right into our next session. I'm going to introduce Ty and Cadigan to you. Hello, how's it going? Doing good. good. How good. are you? Hey, doing great. It has been a uh, jam-packed day two of this event. We had, uh, apparently there's a blackout in Stockholm, Sweden uh, tonight, which is causing, uh, caused us some interesting problems earlier, but everything has been going uh, as smoothly as you expect when we're demoing tech products and and really talking about innovation in fashion and apparel. And with that said, I'm going to let you, Ty, take it away, introduce Kat again, and I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. This is Ty Givens from The Workforce Pro, and I'm going to be introducing you to Cadigan Price, who is founder and CEO of Cadigan. Um, they have these amazing jackets that I actually love, and I'm going to let Cadigan tell you a little bit more about it, but I'm going to be talking with him about his brilliant decision to focus on customer experience fairly early in his process. So I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, no, that sounds great. So uh, the brand was founded in 2017, um, probably more or less came to market really in 2019 after kind of traveling the world, really understanding supply chain, uh, you know, the process not only to create a leather jacket, but, you know, one that is now Cadigan. And so, you know, with that in mind, um, you know, the evolution, I guess, from there was really, you know, we saw an opportunity for e-commerce, you know, in, in terms of the audience we're engaging with, um, and, and how we wanted to go to market. That was a, definitely a big focus for us. Uh, and with that in mind, we've worked very closely with some retailers as well. And it's really been an amazing feedback loop from our customer base, uh, working with store owners um, to really help us transform the product. And in that process of kind of working so closely with the customer, a lot of things unfolded that we realized were so Kind of quintessential, I guess, in terms of running the business on a day to day, which was e-commerce is so dehumanized, and we really wanted to, you know, bring to light a more hands-on experience as we go forward, and um, that's just, you know, opened so many doors for us in so many different ways. Uh, the community gets stronger day by day. We're super excited about just the just the overall kind of um, growth in terms of maturity of the brand, but also in terms of the way in which we're interacting. Right, we've had just had an amazing NFL partnership that surfaced. We've had um, some other things that have come to light. So it's just because of kind of the focus on product, the focus on the customer and, and how the marriage of the two work uh, in today's climate, you know, really understanding that and applying that has just kind of helped us be more on the, the I guess, trending edge of, of what's needed today. Gotcha. So tell me, what was the inspiration behind starting Cadigan? What's the inspiration behind the brand in general? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm a, you know, a, a buyer myself, I guess, of clothing, of course, just like all of us. But, um, you know, I was never one to really overextend myself into like true designer brands. You know, when you're talking about the, the Louis Vuittons, the Dior's and maybe a Fendi or so. So, you know, from that perspective, um, you know, I always appreciate the quality. You know, it's something that the, the workmanship, the I mean, those guys are are literally creating a new space every day in terms of just thought leadership and in the way in which like a Kim Jones at Dior just creates new and it's just fascinating to me. Um, the other parts of that was, okay, so that's a whole realm of price point in itself. And then I felt like there was kind of the lower end, which is really interesting, like a Zara. Um, some of that stuff's very hit and miss. You know, you have so many SKUs that you can kind of find something within that realm that, you know, maybe you get excited about um, and that the quality's there. But, uh, you know, that's also something that's, I don't see consistency, you just kind of see a spectrum of so many different things, right? A lot of different noises coming kind of when you walk into those stores. And then there's this mid-tier, this premium space, which I think it's been kind of owned and kind of the way I look at it from, you know, your uh, your Vince, your Zadig and Voltaire, your All Saints, your Sandro, your Theory, your Rag and Bone. And they do amazing silhouettes, amazing fabric choices, you know, the, a lot of heritage and a lot of, I mean, some of these brands have been around for 30, 40 years. And I felt like um, there's a bit of like, they're conservative. I don't want to say they're kind of boring, but they're conservative in terms of design. So I felt like you get a black leather jacket, you get a black lining with that leather jacket. There's no, you know, as, as a guy, you want to express yourself within your own comfort, but you want to kind of give yourself that little bit of edge. You want something to, be a little bit more kind of loud at times, other things a little bit more subtle. And so 
the big thing that kind of started the conversation was, you know, how do we basically give the guys the opportunity to tell a story, um, but, you know, what we call design with one twist. So we're always looking to add an element of surprise, but there's a spectrum, right? We're not adding 50,000 studs to our jackets where there's a, a lack of comfort. And so um, we want to, we call it kind of like calmness, composure, confidence. That's the Cadigan man. Um, with that in mind, you know, the look, it, we, we try to like amplify certainty. So whatever that means to kind of the, the kind of customers that we're chasing and speaking with, um, it's really em embodying that. I actually want to show um, show some of your designs. I'm going to bring up your site. And um, I was thinking that. Um, and like, for example, right? So like this, I don't know if you can see it in here, but this has a really cool blue lining, right? Which is going to be less common. I know you probably can't see it, but it's an Italian yes, set. Really blue. But, now, is, um, that, is that particular jacket on the website right now? Yeah, that's just the capital. That's, that's one of probably the, the more cleaner, simpler looks. But you can just scroll down right there. If you just scroll down just a little bit, you'll see like this one on the far left, right? It has the, the leather with the suede trim. This one has a really cool um, kind of diagonal cut in the uh, the shoulder and then the Mavens, yeah. one of our louder pieces with some titanium metalwork and, and some suede details. It's and then really obviously cool. the other part of this whole conversation is, is just to be in that market, obviously it's price. So we had to really understand supply chain to bring Italian satin into the mix and, and bring high quality, you know, full grain Napa leather, but not provided at a retail price point of, you know, $1,400, $2,200. So that was a, a really cool learning experience. Um, and working through that, when we first went to market, our jackets were over $1,000 and we had to really reevaluate supply chain. Um, and, and it wasn't actually that the quality of the product went down. It was just a lot of our, our kind of uh, effort around uh, the different disciplines and domains that made up the product. Um, but yeah, so that's part of it, right? Is to be in that market, you also have to make it accessible. So it's yeah. a premium product, but it's, a, it's accessible. And at the same time, it could be aspirational for a lot of people, which we're hopeful for, but aspirational in the sense that you can achieve it and buy it, kind of like a BMW or some of these cars. That, you know what I mean? It's not a yeah. or something like that. Um, so describe your customer, because you mentioned that, you know, you mentioned a, a lot of different brands that exist today, but exactly who are you guys targeting and what was your process in, in defining that? Because I think that an opportunity for other uh, businesses is to really hone in and focus in on who they're going after, um, especially from a customer experience standpoint. And you tend to you seem to understand your customer very well, you know, what he likes, what he needs. How did you get to that process? And yeah, your customer? I mean, the brand's probably an extension of myself. So if I don't like it, then it's probably an alignment. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's uh, easy. Uh, but, you know, ultimately we have some amazing customers and, and, and kind of focus groups that also provide a lot of sound feedback. But, um, you know, with that in mind, I think, you know, there's our guy, and, and this is something that I've learned, right? Our guy is not, you know, he's old enough to so let's say 28 give or take old enough to appreciate quality but also invest in quality right so you know understanding and by all means i'm not you know czar and some of these guys some some great wins at those stores so it's somebody that appreciates quality knows how to find quality knows how to style things together right so they may wear something from zara or something from vince because that's a really nice clean tee but then they want to wear a jacket that you know you can be a little bit louder you know with jackets you can always take a jacket off, right? So you can wear something a little bit louder knowing that you can always co-check it. So with that in mind, um, you know, our customer we've seen, it's probably like 28 all the way up to like 58, which has been amazing. We have this amazing audience, 48 to probably 58, that has been absolutely um, very, very kind of, uh, you know, a incredible supporter of what we're doing. Um, you know, I think the, the big conversation piece is the lifestyle piece. So we're speaking to somebody that, you know, enjoys going out to a nice dinner, maybe has a few kind of wild nights, you know, within a, within a quarter and kind of gets after it, has some fun, dresses up, goes out with uh, their friends or a couple guys. Um, somebody that definitely travels a lot, right? So they're kind of changing climates and, and living in and out of, um, you know, uh, colder or warmer weather. Um, and I think it's, it's somebody that, you know, at, at the very core, it's somebody that, you know, is a sense of humility, right? So the clothing is not super loud. So I think it's somebody that's not trying to be the loudest person in the room, but it, it lives a life of abundance is actually like striving for so much more in life. So, you know, I look at our, and the way we want to speak to our customers, somebody that isn't living an ordinary life. You know, this is somebody that is creating 
an extraordinary life. And, and what that means is like, whether it's in a corporate setting where they work for somebody else, but they just want more. Like they're constantly pushing the needle of corporate entrepreneurship internally um, to kind of earn that seat at the table. And so I find that like, it could be a small business owner, a medium sized business owner, um, somebody that, you know, appreciate we do have a lot of really awesome celebrities from Sterling K to just that partnership with Lance that like, obviously people appreciate that. And, and that obviously has a part in it. But I think the big conversation piece is, I want to create a piece of clothing where if you're having dinner with the CEO of a thousand, two thousand person company and he's wearing that Tom Ford jacket because he can afford it, you come to dinner at the Cadigan or at the table with a Cadigan jacket and you just immediate like there's nothing that needs to be said, but he respects you, your well rooms, you look the part, and you you basically have earned that seat at the table. And when you're at that table, you feel comfortable. So you can always level up and hopefully you'll grow to the point that Cadigan, the price point, it's, it's you know, inconsequential to, you know, your, your discretionary income. But the point being is, you know, I think there's a much larger audience out there that's trying to achieve that than the ones that, you know, obviously that are already at that, that 1%. And so, you know, giving people the tool, you know, clothing's your second skin, giving them the tool to feel confident, look their best. I always say, I don't care if you own one Cadigan or 10, but if you only own one, but, we also consciously have that outfit that we're like, all right, I have a, a big date or a big meeting or, and you want to look your best. Like, you know, that outfit, you're like, I just feel yeah. good in this. If that's our jacket or if that's our tea or something of that nature, then we're doing our job. And that to me is probably the most important part of the, the whole piece. I love that. I love that. I know you and I have been working on customer experience ops more specifically, and I really commended your decision to focus on it so keenly and also, um, you are one of the most prepared people I've ever worked with. Whenever we have anything to work on together, you're constantly on top of it, if not ahead of it. Um, and even going down to the detail of having your um, your playbook that you've designed already, which is amazing. Um, when you were building out, I'm almost I'm more curious about like your even your background and your thought process in setting up your business because you seem to be very forward thinking and you seem to be thinking about things from end to end. Can you talk to the audience about um, your your mindset when you were setting up the business um, and then deciding who you wanted to be? So for example, that's a long question, but for example, yeah. when um, we call uh, any business or you talk to any company, uh, the person picks up the phone and they like, for example, you know, thank you for calling Cadigan. This is Ty as an example. Right. My name is Ty, but the person called Cadigan. Right. And so regardless of what Ty says and does, the person's going to remember what happened with Cadigan, not mm -hmm. necessarily with Ty. Right. So as you were thinking about who your brand was going to be, how it was going to be presented, what were some of the thought processes that you had and what drove you to become so focused on making sure that you had built your brand documented pretty much and like regimented everything that you wanted, which I think is great. And it's something I encourage and actually do for other clients, but I didn't have to do that for you. So I just want to learn a little bit more about yeah, your background and how you came to be. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, um, I mean, when I was the truth be told, I, I didn't really get into the opportunity to do this. So, you know, most recently, so, um, when I was much younger, I had an amazing grandma who was just a phenomenal artist or is a phenomenal artist. And so she definitely imprinted on me just working with her on acrylics, pastels and, and different, you know, mediums that um, I didn't realize, you know, what that really meant to me at, at such a young age. And it just probably opened my mind plus some of the traveling I had done early on. And so, you know, when you bring that to light and then you kind of move forward and, you know, graduated college, um, got a, year, a job in kind of a sales role and, and stayed in that kind of capacity, worked my way up into enterprise software. Um, but the point being was just, you know, from that perspective, like corporate has a lot of value, right? In terms of like a company is not a, like the last company I was with was a half a, you know, 500 million, about a half million dollar company, 1700 employees. They didn't get there without, you know, structure, systems, people, like it's just nearly impossible to do that without obviously having a team around you. And so, you know, there was a lot to be said if you kind of open your eyes to like, why do we do this? And what is this system? And what's the, you know what I mean? You realize like if you get outside of your bubble as an employee and look, and, and as I kind of worked my way up within that company, had a chance to be in Singapore for a couple of years working, like my eyes got opened up, you know, seeing some of the p &L and other things. And so with that in mind, um, you know, that was kind of the, the foundation, if you may. And, and 
you know, what came of it was I just realized that it wasn't lighting my world on fire like I had hoped and I ventured out into the creative world. And when I started Cadigan, you know, I, I couldn't tell you where this came from. And I was thinking of like, if you were to ask me um, what feedback would you give or what, what would you let somebody know to kind of, um, you know, start off on the right foot. Yeah. There's two things, and I didn't mention it before, but I want to make sure I mention it. So you asked, like, how do we define the avatars? But uh, the first thing was when we started the business, which kind of answers your bigger question, is I decided, okay, I got to come up with, like, three core values mm -hmm. um, that ultimately resonate throughout the entire capacity of the business, no matter how big or small we ever are, that every decision that from there on out is basically decided based on those factors. And okay. what I mean by that is for, for the brand, especially for me as a, a decision maker within the brand, a key stakeholder, and I, and I push this off onto all staff and, and, and primary kind of key stakeholders is uh, scalability, freedom, and quality. And like they're, they're, they're kind of overarching umbrellas and they're the North Star. So quality, right, that's an easy one, you know, whether it's product, if you can find a lining for $3 cheaper per yard, that doesn't mean it's the right lining for us. For somebody else like Zara, that might be the right lining. I won't make a decision based on price. Um, the second conversation piece is around uh, you know, scalability. Systems create scalability. People create scalability. So when you think of it in that nature, it, myself compared to another business owner, hey, look, business is growing. You should implement a service help desk. Somebody else may say, look, we're trying to bootstrap it a little bit differently. Let's just keep using the email. I say, look, I know that we already need to have the transparency, the reporting, the people. Let's put the system in place first, build on top of that system, knowing that from on that, there on out, it's going to be a much easier process for everybody involved. And I can now bring more people into the fold much easier. And then last part is freedom. Like that's selfishly, it's for me. But, you know, I was wanting to work on the business, not in the business. Yeah. And I want to be able to step away, meaning I have support systems, so forth. And so, like, in terms of those three principles, I, I can honestly say when it came to the conversations we had, the reason we had those conversations is because it was very black and white. Do you do this or do you not do this? This is directly aligned with what I believe is, is the North Star for the business. The system comes first, and then we do this, 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 and this. And, um, and then the rest of it is, is, is uh, just obviously hard work. I've got some incredible people around me. Like I really do. So this is, I've learned so much from other people. Um, and I've got a mentor that, you know, more or less is so involved in the business. And then I got one of the best customer service people I could ever ask for. And then a million other marketing folks and, and, and warehouse people that just make this business run so smoothly. And so, um, yeah, I think people without a doubt have made a difference. They give me the time back to be prepared for, the conversations you and I have get you the information you need, right? And yeah. uh, that that to me is uh, that's a that's a you can't put a price on that as well. I'm with you on that one for sure. Um, I know earlier on you had mentioned that um, a part of what you wanted to do was have a very human experience, mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to differentiate yourself from other brands. Can you expand on that a little bit? What does that look and feel like to you and your and your customer? Yeah, you know, I think um, when I when, when I first you think of the lifestyle, right? So when I think of the lifestyle of the brand, I, I you know, when you go, and I just say BMW, I just happen to have one, but when you go to the service center, like, you get a very positive experience there. You, I hope you do. You know, that's their effort, right? And you're, it's going to be a little bit different than maybe some of the other brands that are going to be considered a, a class below, right? And so my point being is just that, you know, there, there's two ways to look at it. You know, you, you make, we're not Wi-Fi and I mean that jokingly, but like if Wi-Fi doesn't work, people are pissed. Like, you know, right away, and they're like, damn, this Wi-Fi sucks. <laughs> we're clothing, right? If, if somebody gets something and it, it's not like in terms of they have to exchange it or they don't have the best customer service experience, like, but then they wear it and every, every, they get a bunch of compliments. They almost forget about that. Mm -hmm. and that could be a way to just kind of accept, which is a bit complacent, but you could just accept that as being like, let's give a, a six, seven customer, you know, like six, seven, eight kind of experience, and that's good enough. But I, I actually feel, and this is somewhere where I'm really leaning into as a business owner and, and driving the, the culture and the organization in, into like a very customer service oriented ph philosophy, theory, and practice. And the reason for that is, is because I think 
e-commerce, especially with COVID, it's it's be, it's only going to get more saturated. It, it's a very effective business model, so rightfully so. And with that, customer service is an amazing opportunity to differentiate yourself. And when we talk about what we're doing today and what we're going to do, the part we're doing today is there are a lot of brands out there that you buy something from them and in the parcel comes a prepaid return shipping label. So yeah. you basically can immediately try it on and say, yeah, and ship it back, right? And you know, you're almost encouraging that behavior. And then the other part to it is there's a lot of these things like happy returns and all these platforms out there where people can basically go to a website, a microsite, click a couple things and process an exchange or a return. Wait, one, one second, Kat, again. Sure. The, the sound. Are you experiencing I, that too? I can hear you both fine. I heard a little bit of echo on your side, Ty, though, but I think it's, I think it's still working. Okay, I because literally I was hearing. Oh, you're okay. Do you need me to? I'm on a delay, me? but as long as everybody else is good, I'll be quiet. Go on. No, Sorry. I think I think it's working. Okay. Yeah. No, I think we're okay. I can hear great. And um, and so all I was saying was then the other part too is like automation of returns just through a website. People go, they click a couple buttons. So one thing we've done is like I want you to speak with somebody on our team. One, we can learn what's going on, so we can adjust that in future product cycles. But two. That, that's a great opportunity for us to, to build a win and build a relationship most importantly, because let's say somebody is in between a, a medium and a large and they want to go ahead and they, they need to kind of find out, well, we don't have a store at this time. So having them the opportunity to go ahead and try on those two jackets um, is, is an amazing opportunity for you know that customer to basically really see that we value kind of their support and their you know basically involvement in the brand and do it in a more um, premium way, like do it in a more hands-on white glove approach. And so that's really important to us. And one thing that I'm really focused on and working with you is basically tripling the size of our customer service staff in the next 60 days. Like we are focused on putting systems in place and people in place so that we can do live chat on the website and do like proactive live chat and like engage with customers on the front end because I want to humanize that experience in a very like, casual conversational way and then on the return side and then obviously handling phones we need more support on in real time to to come ahead and support phones so we're we're kind of flipping the script instead of saying let's get that six seven eight score and, and that's you know that's good we want to go into the point where people are like bar none best customer service i've ever experienced and 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 they just have faith because e-commerce you don't you know you get something at you know, for the first time, especially, you're like, will it fit? Will it not fit? That creates a lot of apprehension. I want to make sure that we we're, we're there each step of the way to kind of handhold the customer through the experience um, and make sure that they have a positive one. So, I'm still having sound issues. It's okay. Um, actually, you. So for me, the second part of the the, the conversation just ended. <laughs> um, uh, that's okay. Sorry about that, y'all. It's okay. Um, though that was great. I'm really looking forward to um, continue to work with you on on building the experience that you want to give to your clients. It's been really fun so far, and I love how in touch you are with the experience that you want to create. It makes my work a lot easier, um, and that's that's what we're here for. So let's see here. Um, all right, so let's look ahead. Uh oh. I'm just bringing you, oh. bringing you face to face. Okay. I'm still, still having that trouble, but that's okay. Um, let's look ahead. Okay. Okay, no problem. Let me stop all of my my screen share. Um, all right. So, uh, let's talk about the future and um. Let's talk a little bit about the experience that you've had with COVID. Like you mentioned that so many customers are, or excuse me, businesses are moving towards e-com, which is 100% true. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted Cadigan as a brand? Where do you see yourself in a year from now and five years from now? Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, I, to say that like, we don't necessarily pay attention to that would be a lie, but at the same time you can't, right? They have their own business model, like e-commerce within e-commerce is like, it's amazing what I've learned just in the different business models. So I think, you know, the big thing is understand your customer, understand 
Um, you know, we have a branding deck, which, uh, you know, I talked about the principles and the branding deck, the two go hand in hand to kind of speak to the evolution of the brand. And, and more importantly, share that with our partners that we bring on so they understand kind of our footprint and what we stand for. But, you know, with that in mind, um, customer service, you know, I think that's going to be a keystone to our success. I'm in a, a, a kind of a project right now, we could call it, which will be delivered in April, where we're basically partnering with a company that has over 5 million body scans. And why that's so important is they can actually basically with very limited information, plus our detailed specs, plus some customer feedback, which we've been working on with our customer base, basically provide a recommendation in terms of a fit. So they have this ability to take basically that customer's profile, which very, very simple, like less than maybe four questions, five questions, like very simple. And it's just like, click, 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 done. And it can spit out a recommendation on the jacket. So, and it's, it's you know, to our spec, to how we'd like to see the jacket fit. So I think that will be amazing. Um, and then big picture, it's just evolution of product. So, you know, we're already working and, and having conversations around the whole denim kind of build out, right? And when we first launched, we had kind of done everything. So we had shoes, bags, belts, uh, you know, menswear, and it's all its glory. And we kind of narrowed down the scope just to get really good at a couple of things. And now we have, but we know the vision for the big picture, but now kind of build it out um, and, and take that time to do it right. You know, we just launched hoodies. That was like a six month process, but feedback's been amazing, right? So you, like to me, that's really important because of kind of the ethos of the brand, what we stand for, and more importantly, our price point. And so, you know, with that, we're working on a denim project. That's a big goal for this year. Um, and then from there, that opens things up. We can get into like wovens, we can get into knitted, uh, you know, sweaters and so forth and some kind of cool look and feel. Definitely accessories to complete the look, the look, you know, bags, belts, shoes, that kind of thing. Um, and so that's all, you know, privy and, and something we're working on. And then um, lastly, you know, we have, we have big plans. I mean, from the standpoint of, creating uh, in-store experiences. Um, we've had a number of stores reach out that we're exploring partnerships with in Florida and Georgia, California, New York, um, that we, that like the right partners, brands that carry really cool brands from Balmain to MCM to like brands that we, we would fit in nicely with and really kind of be respected upon, which is pretty cool. And even be offered that opportunity is tremendous. And then lastly, it's international. So, um, Q1 next year, big plans is, is to open this thing up into we've got some amazing outreach from Germany and some other markets on a monthly basis and, and see what we can kind of drive from that story. And then women, maybe one day soon, because I have women that always ask, when are we going to get our jacket? So, yeah, that was going to be my next question. I'm still having the sound issue. Derek, can you hop in for a second? I'm going to drop off and come right back because I have a final question for you. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, well, I'm, uh, well, we're waiting for your return. I am eyeing these jackets, just kind of like sitting here on the sidelines thinking, okay, when do I get this? Right. Um, I love the styles I'm looking across and that suede one is like perfectly my style. And I'm thinking as soon as, uh, live events become, um, become a thing again, I'll be traveling yeah. to a few of them. And so, uh, definitely want to, um, want to incorporate that while we're waiting on Ty, I have a question. You talked a little bit about price point and pricing and being able to work yeah. that on the supply chain side. Have you done anything in terms of price testing? Because I feel like yeah, these much. price points are, um, you know, it, it could be that the price goes up and you get more sales because you're in such a great niche luxury market. So that, that's yeah, just no, my that's question. A great question, right? So it's a, especially with jackets, it's a, this was a kind of a learning experience over 18 months, but Went to market, you know, let's say thousand dollars plus when we first first launched, and and it was so nominal and, and such a like only a handful of people have those jackets. But you know, the reality of it is, is if you want to play in that space, the whole business model changes from runway shows and fashion show. Like you're talking wow. a different mindset as a brand, and you have to have incredible patience in the scheme of things because you know that that's a it's a commitment, and most people are not going to jump on that online. To be honest, like most people are going to try that on in a store and then they'll be like, oh, this is, you know, and that's where we had a lot of good retail re relationships and that's where that product moved. And in that kind of venture, um, you know, we were doing some different things, like we were using some exotic materials and some other things. But, you know, there was, you know, black leather is king, right? So, you know, I'm not wearing one of the black leather, yeah. black leather is king. And, uh, and so 
we went from that to evaluating and, and testing on some price points. And so we spent a couple months and, and it's an interesting sweet spot that we found. Um, and we've had to work backwards with our partners and, and, and really understand kind of how this is all going to come together. But particularly on the jackets, knits, you know, we kind of, we're kind of in the mix with a lot of the other people, but on the jackets, I have found that when you go, and this is without, like we're a newer brand. So this is without like Armani behind you, right? So granted, you know, like without that kind of brand kind of platform to stand on. So yeah. with that in mind, when you go into like what I have found, like $600 plus, more or less 650 plus, you get into this conversation where, especially for the first time purchase, people people start to realize like, ah, this is, a, this is an investment, which it always is, but I, I want to try it on first. For, and like, that's really interesting. Around that sweet spot of the $500 mark, give or take, um, we have found that people are willing to give us a shot. And then we uh, hopefully we always exceed expectations, but like that is something. And it's interesting because if you go less than like probably 300, 350, people don't believe it's real. Like there's no way it could be that nice with like, they're like, you know what I mean? But not that we, have, we can right. even afford to do that with our marches, but they would be like, they would be like, that's fake leather. Right. So it's like this weird, like you can't go too low because then people are like, we're using real leather. There's no way you can make a jacket that nice in that part, which is, I mean, you'd have to do an incredible amount of units. But so it's kind of funny, like testing and understanding that we have found this sweet spot for us where, look, we get messages quite often where people are asking if they can come in and try it on um, with COVID and other things. It's kind of limited our ability to have that interaction. But, um, you know, ultimately, it, it's it's kind of a fun place to play that, that 450, 500, 500. It just opens the door for conversation. And obviously, the free shipping, free returns, that just allows people to have a little bit more comfort around the purchase. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps you. Oh, yeah. I, I love it. Ty, I'll let you ask your final question. I'm hopping back. Yeah. So um, I think we talked a little bit about what's next, possibly moving into women's clothes, going international, which is amazing. Um, the final question I have for you is what um, what would you do differently? Like knowing what you know now, you spent a lot of time building your brand, researching, et cetera. Um, if you were to start anew, what would you do differently? Yeah, I think um, it's a tough, you know what we, we like, we invested in, we're talking, I, I, I personally, I guess, invested in thousands of dollars because we're, you know, the I, I've made some money through my professional career, which is fun this business. So, I, you know, I, I spent a lot of money on like trademarks. Now, granted, now looking back on it because of where we are, where we're going, like those trademarks could cost us a lot more later if we didn't do that. At the time, I think that was a terrible investment. But my point being is I think, and where I'm going with this is that we we basically, I, I have, I worked for a big company before I left. I um, always appreciated the scalability. I, I mean, I'm a big dreamer when it comes to having a team and, and that like I, I enjoy that I thought that those people give me energy and so my point being is like I, I never wanted to be a mom and pop shop I never wanted like we have dreams to be a you know billion dollar business in 10 years like that is what we are working towards um, you know and we have that like we want to get into a hotel like there's some things that like I would love to see kind of the, the progression right take the you know and so my point being is just with all of that in mind you also have to understand you don't start that way and so when you have those big dreams, you have to dial it back in terms of your decision making. Um, you have to be a dreamer, but you also have to understand that from one to 100, there's 99 or 98 or 99 steps in between that take you all the way to that. And those brands have gone through it. So to look at All Saints and try to even replicate um, some of the things that they may be doing correctly or incorrectly or build off of, you don't have the complete picture because there's so much infrastructure, so much overhead you can be more nimble, you can be quicker to market, you don't have the scalability in some areas, you can't afford to do certain things, like we can't finance the amount of inventory needed, like we would be in a much healthier, even if we could just finance, you know, the the over, you know, multiple seven figures, we probably need an inventory at this moment to kind of build. And so those kind of things are earned, they're, they're learned, and you just can't expedite that. And you also can't live in that mindset of always, not even comparing, but, trying to be like you you should want to be your own brand and better than what's out there and try to limit kind of how much energy you spend trying to always understand what like 
the biggest players in the world are doing because I get that's what you want to become. We all, after college, we all want to work for Nike. We all want to work for, but like most of us end up at companies we've never heard of before. Yeah. And like you eventually could end up at Nike and you work your way up, but like there's all these steps in your career path to get there to be the, the marketing manager for Nike. And my point being is the same thing with a brand. Like you could end up, you know, you look at Gymshark and these brands that are in, in a very short amount of time have just changed the entire landscape of a specific product vertical within retail. But, you know, you also have to respect what they've done. And in that respect, be humble, focus on what you need to do in the short term. Think one, two, three steps ahead, plus the 10 steps ahead so that you're building towards that. But that does not happen overnight. That does not, you know, some people hopefully have that success. I wish them the well. It hasn't happened for us. But yeah. uh, but in that regard, I'd say, you know, manage, manage the dreams versus reality. Um, and in that capacity, like we spent tens of thousands of dollars on trademarks way too soon um, where that could have been great value for inventory. Yeah. And then the last thing I finished with is inventory is king. At the end of the day, look, we're talking customer service and I can't wait to double down on customer service website. We have a huge project going on, multiple projects going on there. Um, operationally, we've done some amazing things to kind of streamline logistics and, and, and more importantly, marketing is, is always an ongoing conversation. All of those can be absolutely first class, world class, and if I have no product to sell, we make no money. So the Absolutely. reality of it yeah. is that you have to put more emphasis on inventory. Now it's a, it's a game, right? You can't, you don't, especially out of the gate, don't want, you don't know what the customer feedback is going to be, and, and you want to put the best product out there, but you don't always know if you did it right, right? We've had multiple iterations of our jackets to get them where they are today, whether it's a cuff that needed to be short and a certain zipper that needed to be a little bit bigger, whatever it may be. But my point being is at the end of the day, it's a healthy balance that you have to find because you can invest in all these other areas and create the most amazing experience. But there's only one jacket. You're creating that whole experience for one customer. So in order to kind of finance all of those experiences, plus obviously create kind of the, the realm and community that you want, you have to have product. And that's something that we got out of the gate hot last uh, last fall. And, and that was a very hard lesson learned because – it went amazingly well, um, much more so like within six weeks, well over six figures. And it just like, but we didn't forecast for that on the inventory side. And so all of a sudden we had to rebuild, change the entire production model, financing model to really support what we know we can accomplish this year. Oh, very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah, this. Thank you. No, this was really good. Um, it's been it's been really great working with Cadigan. He's like really on top of this stuff, and um, you can you can tell that he really cares a lot about uh, the experience that he's delivering for his his clientele. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's been great having you both here. I love hearing brand stories like this. It just makes me think about. Uh, it, well, it makes me think about two things. I, I think I gain a little bit more hope for humanity and hope for <laughs> e-commerce when I hear stories of brands that start by caring for their customers and start with core values. Because of course, there is a dark side to e-commerce and a lot of brands that were really out to just like hustle somebody out of a dollar. I think that was the, the trend about 10 years ago that e-commerce is kind of coming out of now when we launch digitally native vertical brands such as yours and prove value. We're also getting rid of that stigma of the past. And so, uh, and this is what will propel e-commerce forward. So you're just a part of a, a beautiful system of taking us to the next level. And Ty, always you're you're showing us how <laughs> the value of caring about the customer is what should it be first and foremost for everyone. So thank you both for being here. We're going to close it out after this. So I'll let you guys go. And then I have some closing words for everyone. Bye, See everyone. You. Thank you again. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate your time. All right. Take this off, put my own face on, I guess. Hey, it's me. Uh, that was it. That's the whole event, two days. Oh my gosh, how many speakers was it? Over 20 speakers. We got to hear from amazing brands. We got to hear from uh, the most unique tech showcases I think we've ever had. And then we we heard from our sponsors. And I think you can see this, this process of laying out customer service, customer value, thinking about the relationship that you have, continuing to grow the relationship with customers and make them feel welcome. And then the same thing is true for influencers, right? Making real relationships with influencers, being authentic about that connection and having um, 
as Leslie put in an earlier interview, having them drive uh, drive the conversation and say, hey, I would love to you know, try on your product or wear it, as opposed to saying, uh, hey, I'll, I'll give you this product for free. Please put it on. Uh, Jay Anderson says, thank you. Thanks for joining me for both days. Jay, it's been great having you and everybody else here live. And if you're watching on demand, thank you as well. My Greenway says, thank you. Um, I got nothing else for you. If you are, you know, if, if your store is is set up running, you're getting good sales, but you're wondering what's next in e-commerce. Of course, we showcase some great tools for you today. I would be happy to talk to you about that roadmap of tech tools and when to implement buy with and when to implement Bates uh, AR tool and so forth and so on to really make sure that you're rolling these things out properly in the business. You you just heard Cadigan say he invested in trademarking too early. Well, I see the exact same kind of thing happening in technology all the time. So I'd be happy to help you put on the brakes on some things while accelerating the gas pedal on other things. Maybe it's email or SMS or loyalty programs, some of the more uh, fine-tuned and, and, and um, core components to your store. Um, thanks again to our sponsors, Gorgeous, LTV Plus, and Recart. I hope to see you guys at another event. Our next event is AI, artificial intelligence. We're gonna go deeper into that. I think we're gonna have a couple of our, spon uh, our, our tech showcases from this back because they're just some really amazing AI tools that we saw recently. That's it from me. Thanks so much. I will see you guys next.